All right, guys, part two. Good afternoon. This is Kristen, owner of Porch Nook, a decorative paint business located in California, formerly located in Wisconsin, but we just moved to the California Folsom area. And yeah, I make paint. I do. I make chalky finish paint. And I just want to have a shout, I want to give a big old shout out to my Porch Nook community on Facebook. Porch Nook peeps, you rock. I love you. Love interacting with you. Best, most supportive group ever. All right. Okay, I'd like to say this, this, this glow about me, I would love to say it's my personality shining through, but it's not. It's wet. It's gonna be 100 degrees here in Folsom here in about an hour. So I'm gonna try to wrap up this little project. So it's uh, my first time painting in about four or five months, just simply because trying to move to California, it was very uh, time intensive. So uh, yeah, my first painting project in a while. Give me a shout out. Let me know that this live is happening. Throw something in comments. I'd love to hear from you. So about an hour ago, not even. Um, I just finished putting a paint on, more specifically Sublime, Porch Nook Sublime, chalky finish paint, on that Drexel end table piece right there. And now, with the help of you folks, uh, we're going to paint, we've decided to paint Marigold. You guys heard me, you know I was hoping for Marigold and you guys gave it to me, so thank you for that. We're gonna paint this uh, Drexel coffee table, Marigold, made by Porch Nook. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. So my goal is to create basically a collection of furniture. I see you popping up, say hey, love to hear from you. Um, I'm making a collection, basically a citrus collection of furniture. And so we're gonna have an end table that's gonna be get, um, get shabbed up. This is gonna be done in Marigold, we're gonna shab it up. I'm thinking I'm going to create a dresser too, or create a dresser. I'm going to get a dresser and actually then create a matching dresser to go with these two pieces. And let me know in comments if you guys paint and sell furniture. Um, I don't know about you. Um, a, lot, a lot of furniture painting artists, artists tend to focus on selling one piece at a time. What I like to do, I like to create a room or a, um, a collection of items that all go together and you can photograph them and market them as a group which may actually increase your chance of selling more than just one piece, um, but also additional accessories as well that would match and go with the set and people can buy the accessories as well. Makes sense. I used to work in the catalog world. <laughs> A lifetime ago, I used to work on catalogs and that's what we used to do. Used to group merchandise them basically. So yeah, I'm, I'm just starting to work on this collection. This is a part two. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Love to hear from you. Marigold, baby. Marigold. Oh, I almost did Monarch. But we're going to do Marigold. All right. There it is. It's like a golden rod. Hey, Joanne. It is vibrant. It is vibrant. You know what this color? Tell me what the color reminds you of. Let's play a game. I think when I landed on this color, I figured out why. It's a nostalgic reason for me. It's like this electric mustard yellow. It reminds me of the yolk inside of a Cadbury egg. It does, you know, like that electric orangish yellowish yolk inside the chocolate Cadbury eggs. I think that's why I like it so much. So this is a four, li uh, four liquid ounce sampler. That's available on porchnook.com. I'm just going to start with that. And today I'm just going to use a sponge. I'm not going to use any fancy brushes. Just going to use a sponge. Because I'm in a no nonsense kind of mood. Just want to get rolling. So there are a lot of folks out there, a lot of boutiques, a lot of brands out there that try to convince you. You know what? I need to mix this a little bit. Hold on. Hold on. There are a lot of brands out there that try to convince you that you need to spend a small fortune to paint furniture, like a certain brush for $80. I say, heck no. Use what you, what you got. You probably have the brushes on hand already. Your house is like a summer camp. It is. Four o'clock, we're gonna do lanyard bracelets. 
You know what? Oh, okay. After I'm done with putting a coat on this table, I'll show you some other projects I want to do. My bandwidth is wide open, Joanne. Wide open. I'm so excited I can get started. You're right. It is like summer camp. I love my life. I do. I hope you, all of you love your lives too. Okay. Here we go, shall we? Now, the reason why I'm doing Marigold today is because of Wendy in Texas. She's been showing me pictures of a piece she's been doing in Marigold. Love it. I became so jealous. So I'm all like, I need to do me some Marigold. All right, here we go. Let me know if you guys can see this okay. Let me know if there's a problem. So because it's a warm finish underneath this warm color, marigold, I think I'm going to layer it on, layer, probably could have about two or three coats. See, I really want to, I think, achieve this color right here. See how it pops? To go with the sublime. So the warm original finish kind of washes out the warm pop of these marigold but that's okay it just means i'm just going to need a little bit of extra paint that's good that's fine when you have a contrasting color a very cool color like the sublime against a finish just like this it's, it you know it actually makes and uh, makes the original finish pop and it's actually in my opinion more complementary and you can actually um use that to your advantage when it comes to nailing down a rustic look What do you guys think? Mm, I need to figure out better ways to sit. I'm not an animal and I'm not like a young person. I need to figure out where I can sit and feel <laughs> like a human being. I haven't really got my studio set up completely. I love the features of this table. You guys see this right here? I'm excited to see how I can make this pop. Just reading your comment, crafts, I've got a glare here, crafts, snacks, and crafts. <laughs> when do we go to the pool? Love it. <laughs> Joanne, you're funny. We're actually going to the pool. So um, we're going to the pool. David actually has a swimming lesson this afternoon, so we'll be going to the pool later today. <laughs> so this summer's been fantastic. Trying not to clot up the the molding here. Oh my god, another delivery? <laughs> I swear, every time I go live, there's a delivery. Maybe it's not mine.
have a delivery. I have no idea what's going on. Um, this is awkward. You know, I'm not gonna help him take it out of the truck. That's his job. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, excuse, excuse my OMGs. Thank you. Still got some more I got too much. <laughs> you guys aren't gonna believe what I got here. All right, thank you, thank no you. Is that it? I hope yeah. that's it. Yeah, just the one. Do I need to sign for this? Uh, yeah, yes, you do. Yeah. It'll be a signature and print your name right there for me. Yep. Oh wow, nice. Thank you. Made you. all that kind of stuff. Yes, this is my kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Here you go. Yeah, uh, you need that one. Oh, you got such a <laughs> My apologies. Can you put uh, it right there. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you want to go Thank you. All right. You guys aren't going to believe this. All right. I um, I ordered packing peanuts. Can you give me a thumbs up if you saw my post earlier about all the peanuts that, um, that came in the other day? Well, I had a really hard time grasping square footage into packing peanuts. <laughs> Look what just showed up. Um, can you guys please start ordering paid, please? Because I had no idea I ordered so many peanuts. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Right, I'm going to put you back on the clip. I was actually hoping that that was going to be um, a landscape shed that I ordered from Home Depot, but it's more packing peanuts. Uh, this is rare for me. I'm lost for words. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Here's the thing. We've worked very hard to free up space in the garage, and I keep eating up all the garage space with packing peanuts. It just keeps coming. Um, how many coats? Okay, so Lorena, how many coats do I usually do? You know, Lorena, you and I both know that it depends on the technique and the look you want to do, right? Sorry, I'm just trying to get my wits about me because I'm still having a hard time getting over the packing peanuts. <laughs> if you're doing a dry brush technique, usually I only do one, maybe two coats. Maybe, but that's a very minimal amount of paint that's required to do a dry brush technique. To do a solid, solid color look, like block solid color, you know what I mean? It depends on the shade, frankly. Um, like Sublime, I would probably get two to three coats to get a solid, saturated color of a table. I'm thinking with this, I'm gonna need at least two coats with the Marigold. I have found my Real Teal, Porchnook Real Teal, which is actually one of the most popular colors on my line. Um, I, I tend to use two to three coats, but then when it comes to Old Faithful, sometimes I can get away with just one coat. You know, it's all driven by it, right? It's how liberally we, we use it, right, Lorena? How about you? You guys, Lorena, you gotta listen to Lorena. She knows what, she knows her stuff. So like on this piece, I'm probably just gonna do two coats because I'm gonna kind of keep the shabby look. See how it's, you can see the original finish here? And I, I wanna keep that. I like that. All right, I was kind of distracted. <laughs> Lay out my paint. I mean, seriously. Okay, I can't wait till Christmas because then I can just ship gifts with all these darn packing peanuts. I want you guys to get a good view. Bear with me. Bear with me. Can you see that okay? If you don't like the angle, please speak up. I'm only 
definitely as good as you guys will let me be. <laughs> yep, so Lorena, she uses two to three coats. You haven't used a sponge. How do you like I do like it. I like it very much. Um, so Lorena's asking about, you know, this whole sponge thing. I like it because I'm in a no-nonsense kind of mood. Um, I like to be able to use a sponge and then throw it away. But here's the thing. I have sponges in my in my workbench area because I like to repurpose packaging materials that come in through Amazon. So sometimes I get sponge packing materials, right? And what I do is that I pack them up, or rather I cut them up, right, into these type of sizes, and I use them for painting. Frankly, I hate washing my brushes. Can I get an amen if you hate washing your brushes? <laughs> if you got a really big piece that has got a lot of flat surface to it, like an armoire, get a roller. Just throw some fortunate paint into, you know, a roller bin. You know what I do? I tend to um, upcycle my, you know how you get the salad greens in like these plastic bins at the grocery store? Give me a thumbs up if you know what I'm talking about. It's the only way I get my vegetables in me, seriously, is because I need a bin to put my paint in. <laughs> so I eat my greens and then I wash out the plastic bin that it comes in and I use that to put my paint in and then I use a roller sometimes, just use my roller and put it in there in the, in the plastic bin and then just apply it to a really big piece that has a flat surface to it. Because it can be really daunting having to hand paint something with a brush. There are some purists out there that are all like, all about the chalk paint brushes. You know, it's so subjective. It's all about personal preference. So you guys, I want to talk to you about Lorena, who's commenting during this live. She is an amazing artist in Verona, uh, Verona, that's weird, in Nevada. And she actually helps test out my colors and help me with my color portfolio. My latest color that was just released, gosh, what was it, a week ago, Lorena? Can you remember? It's all a blur. Um, Fuchsia is so bright. She's going to be one of the artists who's going to be receiving a jar of that for free paint a real life, you know, example of how the paint would be used. And then she supplies the photography to Porch Nook and then I add it to the Porch Nook color portfolio to help people visualize and understand. Oh, I'm loving how this is turning out. There's these uh, nuances and complexities that are showing up. Like if I keep a little bit of the finish showing through, so cool because the single layer of marigold here is really helping the second layer of marigold really pop. Oh, I'm loving this. And when I'm done here, what I'll do is that I'll take you guys off the clip and help you get a good view here. Loving it. Love the strong word, but I do. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Whoever buys this is going to love it too. I'm going to try not to block you guys. I'm sorry. Let me know if you guys have any questions. So again, the table that's behind this coffee table, I use Sublime. I'm trying to come up with like a citrus themed collection of furniture. It's uh, sort of my inspiration of moving to California. I love the produce here. It is delish. Love the citrus here. I desperately need to get citrus trees in my backyard. Desperately. One thing at a time though. 
Let me know what you think of this. And so to complement the, uh, the green table there, I'm using marigold. If you want information on these colors, there are links to the slide and the subject line there in the subject title. Be right back. I'm gonna get a towel. <laughs> so I gunked up some of the lines here. A little more than I wanted to. So I'm just trying to clean it up before it dries. I like how I'm fine with a little bit of paint inside these seams here, but I kind of want to keep them free of paint because I love how it pops and contrasts the color. So, loving it. around. I want to show you the top. Oh my god, I'm loving it. You see that? I'm hoping you can see, and again, I'll, I'll zoom you guys in after I'm, you know, done putting this coat on. But it's like you really see the pop of the second coat and the parts where you see only a single coat. You can just see different color nuances. I'm loving it. Loving it. Okay. Oh, hot day. Hot day. Where are you guys watching from? Oh, it's really hot. So it's going to be 100 today in Folsom, California. 100. How is it over where you are? So I'm excited. One of the many reasons why I was excited about uh, moving to California that, you know, first of all, I get to garden all year round. But secondly, I get to, I get many more months in the year to paint in the garage. Who out there paints in their garage? The thing is, regardless of the brand you paint that you use, whether it's a chalky finish paint, an interior paint, an exterior paint, you have to keep the temperature outside, if you're working outside, in mind. Doesn't matter what brand of paint you're using. Every paint has a threshold for being able to dry and cure appropriately to allow the chemicals to actually bond and make your paint as sturdy as possible. You really can't exceed a certain temperature and you can't go below a certain temperature or else it just won't dry as it should. So for example, um, porch nook chalky finish paint, my paint, it really needs to be at least 54 degrees where you're working. It really does. And that's the case for most paint brands. It's pretty standard. It's tough when you, have, when you live in a cold zone in the U.S. and you have a client who wants like a five-piece furniture set painted. It's like, 
where are you going to do it? That's where a lot of muscle comes in. You're taking a lot of things inside and outside the house to work on it. It's not easy. I am loving this color. Ugh, loving it. You guys may be like, you know, Kristen, this is your paint. Of course you love it. You're biased. You know, sure. But I'm a whizzy wig kind of gal. If I don't like it, you're going to know. And if I love something, you're going to know. <laughs> like I even told you with Sublime, the bright green one over there, I tell you guys right off, a lot of people are scared of that color. It's probably my least popular color just because it's so bright and so vibrant and it's so outside the furniture painting norm. Not many people buy it, but I'll tell you what, in a lot of um, um, like home decor patterns that are out there have that bright, vibrant spring green in there. Once I get done with that, I'm going to shab it up. I'm going to dirty it up with some dark wax. It's going to look awesome. And it's going to be that perfect accent piece. So yeah, it's a scary color. People usually look at it in the jar and they're like, ugh. <laughs> Why in the world would I paint my stuff? But then when they see it on a piece of furniture, I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. There is a method to the madness. There are a lot of great paint brands out there. So thank you, by the way, for hanging out with me. And even like, you know, liking my paint. <clears throat> there is a tendency out there for a lot of paint brands to really focus on the earthy looking colors. That is not what Porch Nook is about. I'm about vibrancy. I'm about depth of color, deepness and vibrancy. That's my focus. There is plenty of au natural looking colors out there. Can I get a thumbs up if you agree? I want pop. I want color. Oh, I so love this. Oh my gosh. What do you think? Give me your honest thoughts. Let me see, Lorena has a question. Do I paint the bottom trim of the tables too? And do I flip it upside down to paint it? <laughs> Good question. So um, traditionally, when I, when I do the bottom trim, I just do it upright. But when I want to paint the bottom of something, I always do the bottom first. <laughs> always do the bottom first because you know, you don't want to put this down on its back, right? When it's not even sealed, right, Lorena? Do you guys, what about you? Are you all about, you know, you're all about the details. Lorena loves to paint and stencil the side of the drawers of the pieces that she does. They're gorgeous, just gorgeous. She's all about the details. So yeah, when I do the underside, I just do this. And the thing is that I welcome any and other, any client who comes by to see a piece, I ask them to handle it. I'm like, handle it. Look at the ups, look at the bottom, look at the sides. Make sure you really like it. See that you're happy with it. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna turn this around again.
leave that okay? There we go. No, I'm going to put you back. Comments are blocking. Am I right? Go. So if the comments are ever blocking your view, you can always just swipe the comments to the side, and that gives you a clean frame of what's going on. I'm going to tip it on its side, see what we got. Okay. I love using the sponge too because it holds on to paint for a pretty long time. Work it in there. Very flexible. What do you think? You seeing it? So imagine this distressed and then shabbied up. Oh, I can't wait. I think I'll probably distress tomorrow if you guys want to join me. Let me know if you're interested. All right, let's see what else I got. I can use some more color there. So I really think I need a studio specifically for live guys. I do. Because I'm like, oh, I am not an animal. I'm a human being. I need to work upright. This is looking pretty good. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I had a feeling that I may have to use a larger jar of paint. I started with my four fluid ounces. I thought I was going to need more, but I don't. I don't. The four fluid ounces is going to do it. So excited. Now Lorena, like she can make her paint go on forever. I don't know how she does it. I mean, Really. Maybe, Lorena, if you have some secrets you could share with us, that would be so great. All right. I think I'm pretty much done. Again, the sponge. Do I always use a sponge? Nope. I sometimes use a standard paintbrush. I sometimes use sponges. Sometimes if I have a really large flat surface to work with, like an armoire, it's just so much space to cover, I use a roller. I do. Don't feel like you always have to um, invest in the most expensive, most exclusive tools for painting furniture. What I love about the sponge, I basically this comes from packaging that I received from Amazon instead of just throwing it away I cut it up use it for painting furniture save money and I don't have to clean brushes so fun so great <laughs> so much time saved I also like to use these gloves I used to not wear gloves it would take me forever to get everything out of my nails and I know I embarrassed my family every time I went out to public with painted hands <laughs> I could never get it all off. So I wear these gloves and I just simply just get rid of it and it's done. All right. So again, you guys, today, this is a part two. I just finished painting this table. It's a coffee table. It's a Drexel um, Marigold. It's like a vibrant yellow orange. Earlier today, the part one live, I did Sublime, which is that green table right there. So great. And basically what I'm doing is I'm working towards creating a citrus collection of furniture. And I plan on, pho on photographing them 
together and then also individually. So yeah. Being that I'm new to California, I have no idea what the furniture picking market is like here. I know I gotta do my research. I gotta start reaching out to folks to know exactly where I can sell it because I don't wanna break any Facebook group rules, if you know what I mean. Don't wanna get thrown into Facebook jail. Don't want that. All right, it's getting too hot. We're gonna let these dry. I'm gonna let them cure a little bit for tomorrow. And then I'm gonna sand them. I'm gonna shabby them up to stress them. I'm not sure yet how far I'm gonna go. I don't think I'm gonna go that far. I'll probably use a 220 grit sandpaper and go from there and see what happens. So excited. So I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. You up for it? Thanks for joining me. Oh, thanks for making it fun. You guys stay cool. Lord, so warm. Bye.